Okay, so um, great to have two such eminent speakers. I shall um, let Daniel open the proceedings. I'm going to give him eight minutes to speak. Um, yeah, okay. Go away, Daniel. Thanks, and it's great to be here. Uh, what I want to argue unashamedly in my introduction is that economic growth is hugely beneficial to humanity. It has been beneficial in the past, uh, and it will be beneficial in the future. Uh, having said that, I'm not going to argue there are no problems. I think there are huge problems in the world, including poverty, including even, I would concede, environmental problems. I don't say there are no environmental problems. But what I would argue is that economic growth and the associated development, scientific and technological development, they give us the resources to overcome the problems we face, the problems of poverty and, and the prob environmental problems as well. Uh, now, just to start with one statistic, and I'm not going to riddle my talk with statistics because it's easy to bombard people. Uh, I'll just start with the one. And that is that if you look at global life expectancy, the average amount of time that a human being lives in the world. If you start at 1800, which was really the start of the period of modern economic growth, and fast forward 200 years to 2000, average human life expectancy increased from 30, your average life expectancy in 1800 was 30 years, to 67 in 2000. Now that is an incredible figure. You know, that's just one indication of how much human welfare, human well-being increased over the 200-year period of modern economic growth. And that is a global figure. It's not just a figure for the small elite at the top of society. It's not just a figure for the developed world. It's a global figure. So that figure, at least in relation to life expectancy, which is a very important indicator, should give some indication of the huge benefits of uh, growth. Uh, it's come along with the period of uh, modern economic growth. And it's still continuing. Uh, life expectancy is increases by about two years uh, every decade in the Western world. So it's still increasing, despite all the fears about obesity and so on. Life expectancy is increasing. Uh, now, of course, there's inequality in the world. If you take Zimbabwe, for example, that's probably the place with the lowest life expectancy in the world, between about 45 and 46. And that is a tragedy. You know, I, I wish that Zimbabwe's life expectancy was the same life expectancy as, at least as in the West in the late 70s or higher. But even in Zimbabwe, probably the, the worst country in the world in this respect, it's still much better in terms of a life chance to live in Zimbabwe today, in 2010, than it would be, say, to be born as an average person in Britain in 1800. I could bombard you with more statistics, I won't do so, but I think that gives one powerful indicator of the huge benefits of growth. Just to talk more generally about the benefits of growth. Now, it's usually caricatured in terms of stuff. Uh, Greens would typically say, well, growth means more stuff. Why do you need more stuff? Well, more stuff is quite a good thing. If you look at the average person in Britain, or the rural poor in the 1700s, they literally probably have a couple of pots, a knife, uh, a cup, and that was it. That literally was the limit of their, their property. Now, even poor people, uh, in Britain anyway, often have mobile phones and fridges and central heating and televisions. That's really good. Greens seem to have a real hang-up for some reason about ordinary people wanting to watch flat-screen televisions. That's usually the example they give to show how despicable popular consumption is in their view. I would say there's nothing wrong with people having stuff including, there's nothing wrong, if you want to fo watch football, for example, on flat screen, a flat screen television, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, there may be if it's Newcastle United, but as a general rule, I think there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, having more stuff. But it's not only more stuff, it's better stuff. Uh, it's not that we have what we had in 1800, but we have more of it. Uh, we have much better stuff. So the classic example is someone called Nathan Rothschild. Nathan Rothschild was the richest person in the world, probably, in the mid-19th century, and he died from an infected abscess. That can now be treated with antibiotics that pretty much anyone can afford. You can get it for a few pence in the local pharmacist. And that's because the process of growth not only allows us to have more stuff, but better stuff, stuff we didn't have before. 
including the mobile phones and uh, televisions and so on that I talked about before. Uh, and, but it's not only stuff in terms of consumer goods. It's also the whole infrastructure we take for granted in contemporary society. It's roads, it's airports, it's being connected to the electricity grid, which we take for granted, but it's quite a new thing. Didn't, we didn't have it before the period of modern economic growth. Even universities, dare I say, they were there for the tiny, tiny elites before 1800, but now a large number of people have access to universities and art galleries, and we wouldn't be able to afford that. We wouldn't have that, except perhaps for a tiny elite in society, if it wasn't for popular prosperity and economic growth. Economic growth, I see, is closely tied to other developments as well. It's closely tied to scientific development, to technological development, to what I would see as modernity, to social progress. A central part of the whole process of growth, I would call the domination of nature, conquering nature. Not a very popular or PC thing to say, but I think it's something really wonderful and it should be celebrated. That doesn't necessarily mean destroying nature, it means shaping nature to benefit humanity. Sometimes it means destroying nature, I mean in relation to smallpox for example, a disease that killed hundreds of millions of people earlier in the century, it's now been eradicated. But more generally it means shaping nature to benefit human beings. Now just to conclude, as I say, I can see there are problems, problems of poverty. We need more growth to solve the problems of poverty so the rich world can be poor. Climate change. My response to climate change would be to say the worst possible response is to hold back and to impose rationing and to talk about individual behaviour, which is the mainstream response. What we should be doing is investing, we can invest to decarbonise the energy supply, we can invest in nuclear power, we can invest in hydroelectric, we can invest on a very large scale in solar power, we can adapt by building high sea walls, it's through going forward, through technology, through growth, through investment, that we can tackle problems like climate change. So to conclude, I think we should support economic growth because it benefits humanity incredibly. We should embrace prosperity, we should embrace modernity, we should embrace social progress, because it's only, it's only by ab ab abolishing scarcity that we can really realise that full humanity, and that's really what it's all about. Thank you.